afraid of spiders. First, they're gentle. Okay, they don't, spiders hardly ever bite. They only bite if they're guarding egg sacs or if you squish them. And I can understand a spider biting you if you get, if they get squished. I mean, if I get squished and I can't move my arms, I would bite you too. So spiders are really gentle. And of course, many of them are pretty. I found this one outside my bank. Beautiful spider. And look at this beautiful spider. Oh, saw the spider and I fell in love. Some of them are just doggone cute. Okay, that's not very scientific, but they are. And some are just beautiful and fun to study. Ah, we made a little uh, uh, photographic box, a light box for this out of some science fair boys and we could take a really good picture of this beauty. Spiders are really important to us as predators of insects. Without spiders and uh, some beneficial insects, and perhaps bats, life on Earth would be really hard for humans because insects would devour a huge percentage of our crops and spread a lot more disease. So spiders provide an important service for keeping insect numbers under control. And I love insects, but we got to keep their numbers under control like everything else. So spiders need some human friends because too many people are out there spraying chemicals and when they see a spider kill and all that sort of stuff. Spiders are important. Spiders are our friends, like I say. And the only spider that you have to avoid is the black widow. And this is not an aggressive spider. It's very shy. It's not out to get you. They don't crawl around looking for you or anything. They're usually hidden. So as long as you don't put your hand somewhere where you can't see what's underneath it, you're going to be okay. You know, as soon as you stick your hand under the board where you can't see it or down in that golf or down that uh, gopher hole to get your golf ball, then if there's a black widow and you accidentally squish it, you would get bit. But there's no reason to be afraid of these. Just if you see them, let them alone. And you can all recognize them by that shiny black and the red hourglass. And let's get rid of another myth. Everybody thinks the brown recluse lives in California in the Bay Area. And let's see what the science says. Let's see what the data says. No, 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 no. They're really common in the Midwest. But in most of California, they're not around. There's a little desert species that's pretty harmless. So there are small species. They're very cryptic and they're not in California. So you don't have to worry about spiders hurting you in California. They're, they're gentle creatures. So take it some, from some of my students here that love spiders. And maybe your attitude is replace fear with curiosity. That's a good little slogan. And here's some of my other students all holding a tarantula. And as soon as you hold a tarantula, you will just feel this light from above because they're so soft and gentle and nice. That's what happened to me. They're really cool creatures. And look at this little guy. He knows that spiders are cool. So I want you to like them too. So one of the ways to learn to like them is to, to learn how what makes them tick and learn their anatomy and such, okay? So spiders are invertebrates. They're animals without backbones and they're related to uh, insects and they're related to crabs. And they're in this big group called the arthropods, which are the jointed body animals. You know, here's a joint on my wrist, here's a joint on my finger, joint around here. And they all have a hard outer skeleton made of chitin but uh, spiders in, are in a specific group called the arachnids. And arach is Greek. It's a, a Greek word for spider. And to be in the spider club, I tried to get in the spider club and they wouldn't let me in because I didn't have four pairs of legs and two body divisions. I only have you know, two pairs of appendages, right? My arms and my legs. So I didn't have enough. And uh, they thought I was a spider because I don't have any antenna. Spiders don't have any antennae. But then they looked at my teeth. I have chewing mouth parts. Spiders have sucking mouth parts, okay? So that's what you got to have to be an arachnid. Now, is this guy an arachnid? Is this guy an arachnid? Do we see, you, can you see the kids there? Uh, any hands up saying, yes, this is an arachnid? Or anything in the chat saying, is this an arachnid? The answer is no, this is not an arachnid. How come? Only three pairs of legs. This guy doesn't have enough legs. This arachnid club wouldn't let him in the club. This is a ladybug larvae. What about this Ooh, black scary thing, jointed legs? No, oh, come on. Three pairs of legs, one pair of antennae, a head, a thorax, an abdomen. That's three body divisions. 
Nope, this is an insect. This is Mr. Beetle. Ah, is this an arachnid? Yes, four pairs of legs, two body divisions, no antenna. All right, well, there's other kinds of arachnids besides spiders. There's harvestmen. These look like a spider, but they're not a true spider. And I'll tell you why in a minute. There's scorpions. They have four pairs of legs. And pseudoscorpions, which as you can see from this penny that he's on, are really, really tiny and harmless. They're cool arachnids. I love these. And ticks. Ticks are an arachnid, four pairs of legs. But uh, the next thing, now that you know that spiders are arachnids and who their relatives are, you need to learn their anatomy. Because when you start thinking them as interesting creatures and learning their parts, again, you stop being afraid of them. You're getting to know them. So they all have a big abdomen. That's where all the vital organs are. Digestive gland, the heart, the silk glands, all that sort of stuff. They have this front section, which is, which is a head and a thorax combined. Some people call it the cephalothorax. Other terms are the prosoma, which means first segment. Then they have four pairs of walking legs. And then they have these little tiny little legs in front called the palps. And they use those to manipulate food, or if they're a male, they use those to fertilize the female. And spider eyes, here's a little trapdoor spider we found up at camp. Here's the spider eyes right here. And here's the eyes on a jumper. Nice pair of sunglasses, plus a bunch of other little eyes. So not all the spider eyes are the same. Here's my friend, the lynx spider, and he's got his eyes sort of in this, uh, what, a hexagon, and then two eyes in front. Really cool eye pattern. And then here's our friend, the crab spider, little eight beady eyes. Most spiders have eight eyes. Some have six. Um, but most of the spiders you'll see in Spiderland have eight. Another important part you need to learn are the spinnerets. This is on the back of the abdomen, and that's where the silk comes out. That's where the silk comes out. And they have all these little spigots at the end to control what kind of silk and how to apply it and all that sort of thing. Very complex and very interesting study. Last couple of things is right between, here's a palp and here's a, here's a walking leg and here are the eyes. Underneath that are these things, some people call the spider's hands, but they're called chelicerae or chelicerae, depending on how you want to pronounce them. And at the end of those are the fangs. And so uh, the chelicerae, uh, they sometimes snip silk in between them. And like I say, the fangs are on the end. They're a handy little device for the spider. Here's a different spider. And you can see the eyes in a cluster and big chelicerae and long fangs. This is a non-native that you'll find in the garden. It's a cool spider. Now spiders, uh, well, I think we better practice our anatomy, shouldn't we? So I want all the kids to kind of, I want you all to stand up. And let's all practice here, okay? So let's have our walking legs, right? Right? And then here's our prosoma. Here's our prosoma. Here's our abdomen. Let's get our palps. Everybody get your palps. And let's get our chelicerae. Here's our chelicerae. And let's put a fang on the end. Fang on the end. And most spiders' fangs go side to side. Things like tarantulas, their fangs go up and down. But most go side to side. And of course, we got to see your spinnerets. You got to see your spinnerets. So you can learn this stuff and practice it at home at the dinner table. Let's pretend this was a potato. And I don't know if you can see it. I would go up to it and I would grab that potato or I'd put my head down and I'd use my chelicerae and I'd try to, you know, bite the, bite the potato. So practice that at the dinner table. Mom and dad will like that because you're learning your spiders. Now, how do spiders eat? because they don't have chewing mouth parts. What they have to do is liquefy their prey. So a spider goes up and you can practice this on a little brother or sister. You jump on them and you give them a little bite and with your chelicerae and your fangs and you inject some venom into them and that kills the, kills the prey item, right? And then they come back once their prey is dead and they barf up digestive juices like stomach acids either on the outside or back in through those puncture marks where the fangs were, and that liquefies their prey. And so on the inside, all those muscles have turned into soup. Then they just come back and suck it up. So it's a cool way to eat. And that's what this uh, spider has done here. She's wrapped it up and she's liquefied the inside and then she just kind of sucks up the juice and stuff.
Here's a little diagram of the inside of the spider, and it's pretty complicated, but it just kind of shows you some of the neat little features. And that's another way to, to learn about spiders and to, to not be afraid of them. There's the sucking stomach. Here's the venom gland, and it has a little tube that connects down to the fang and all sorts of little goodies. Here are the uh, silk glands, I think, somewhere in here. Yeah, right around there that produces silk. Silk is liquid on the inside of the spider, and then when it gets tugged out into the air, it becomes solid. Another thing you can do, spider friends, is learn to identify males from females. And adult males always have these boxing glove palps. Their palps become swollen at the end. That's how you know they're an adult. Boy, and look at the chelicerae and the fangs on this guy. He looks fearsome, but these are harmless. All right. Which one? Is it the blue one or the tan one? Which is the male? So on a count of three, we're all going to say uh, left or right or right, whatever put. So one, two, three. Which one's the male? Which one's the male? The left. This left is the male. Right. And how do you know? What do you got? Some spider, you know, savant or something? Nope. You see those old boxing gloves, right? That tells you that's a male. Okay. What about this one? Male or female? What do you think? Anything in the chat there was to tell us? Bryn says male. Jane says male. Anybody else in there? Good job. That is a male. Now. Spiders don't like to hang out in their web in the daytime because predators like birds might get them. So they hide in a little hiding place called their retreat. I love that name. So you can have a retreat at home, like, uh, you know, under the couch or in your bedroom, call it your retreat. Yeah. So sometimes if you can't find the spiders in the daytime, you look on a, along the silk and you'll find them hiding in their retreat. So other things to be a spider, all spiders are carnivores. If you keep a pet spider, you can't feed them lettuce. They all have venom, but most of the venoms are not harmful to you. And they all use silk, but they don't all build webs. And most spiders like to be solitary. You can't keep a collection in a jar like you could with ants or something. And so let's talk about silk because spiders use silk for a variety of purposes. And remember, spiders are really important to the ecology to the environment, not only as food sources for other animals, but they're very important for controlling the population of bugs. And so a lot of the web builders build all these interesting kinds of webs. So if you pay attention to what kind of webs you see, you'll be able to identify the spiders a lot more. And so I went out and I photographed a spider building her web at night. Some build it late at night. Most spiders repair their web every night. I guess they eat the silk and recycle it. They model recycling, which we all need to do. Now, how they recycle the silk, how they eat it, I still don't know yet. I want to learn that. So here's our friend, the garden spider or our jayapi, and she's wrapping up a cricket, okay, wrapping it up, caught in her web, and then she, you can see silk coming out of her spinnerets there a little bit. And here's another one, wrapping up a bug. And Here's a cool web I had in my backyard. Oh man, really beautiful. And so I started wondering, what spider is it? And it wasn't there during the day. I could never see the spider. Where was the spider if it wasn't there in the daytime? Who knows? Who can tell me in the chat? Who can tell me in the chat? Do we see that in the chat and the answers? If it's not there in the day, where is it hiding? In its retreat, Charles says the retreat, or Charlotte says the retreat. Good job, Charlotte and Carlotta. Well done. Well done, Carlotta. Well, I went out at night. <laughs> I outsmarted the spider. And there she is, old Steatota, the false black widow. There she was at night in that web. Now, another use for silk are egg cases. Some, like the black widow, make this parchment-like egg case. Some, like wolf spiders, which a lot of my kids are afraid of wolf spiders. And I tell them, Wolf spiders are harmless, man. Living around the grass and on the ground, they're cool. And Mama Wolfie, she carries the egg sack around with her. She wants to guard those eggs. Later, the babies will hatch out of that and take a ride on her. It's kind of fun to find. Here's another type of garden spider. And look at this beautiful egg case. This was, a, you know, almost an inch in diameter. It was amazing. Another thing that spiders do with silk, some of them make this sort of zipper-like pattern or signature in their web. 
And there's all this scientific debate as to what its purpose is. It's called the stable momentum. Some people say it's to warn birds not to run into the net or the web. Others say to uh, uh, attract bugs. Who knows? Here's another use for silk, the retreat. And if you look very carefully, you can see her sticking her legs out of her retreat. I got to speed up here. So spiders are really, really, really cool animals. I like photographing them. Great hobby. And since we all have cell phones now or, or these phones, we've all turned into experts. This is a great way to collect pictures and make movies and stuff. And spiders are wonderful subjects. They're beautiful. They're easy to photograph. Some are really interesting. This is from Southern California. I want to go down there and photograph some more of these. I started on these foggy mornings getting up early. It's hard to get me out of bed, but when I see spider webs out there, ooh, that's a good chance to photograph them. And then I found this lynx spider in my garden and look at all the babies. Look at all the babies, a blessed event. So I like studying spiders, taking data on them. They're a great hobby. So hopefully you've learned to like spiders so much as me that I have beautiful frame pictures up in my house next to my mother, next to my children. I always have pictures of spiders. So I'll, uh, I'll stick around. We'll turn it over to Anthony, I guess, or back to the librarians and I'll stick around for questions or whatever. Thank okay. you. All right. So Pat, can you stop sharing your screen there? Okay. Sorry. Right. And we do have it. We do have a question here from from Meg. Um, go ahead. I'm gonna Meg. Go ahead and unmute yourself and um, ask your question. Meg, are you there? And we have a bunch of questions. So oh, maybe okay. let's wait till after Ranger Anthony, and okay. then we can do a bunch. Oh, okay. All right. So I'll let I'll let Aaron and Armin handle that part. All right. Thank you, Pat. Um, my, 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 my head is full of spider, spiderness now. And, um, so, well, we're going to, we're going to move on here. going to practice being that, being that spider. I'm going to add a spotlight here for Anthony. And all right. So, um, again, welcome to, uh, Anthony Fisher from Tilden. Tilden Nature, Nature Center in Tilden Park. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm here in the vis visitor center at the Tilden Nature area, which is closed and has been for months. And uh, the little farm is also closed. Probably some of you have wanted to come back. Um, we're starting to talk about opening procedures, but we don't have any set date. I also wanted to say that our parks are going to be closed tomorrow and maybe the next day due to uh, fire danger. So I think all the ridgeline parks are going to be closed. It's supposed to be a lot of wind coming up. Just wanted to put that out there. So I have a, a slideshow also, and these are some pictures of local spiders. Most of these were taken by my coworker, Trent, who's a great photographer. And uh, we'll just go ahead and take a look at these things. Let's go, people. Hello. There we go. We'll just look at some um, spiders that you could potentially find around you in your parks and around your house. Some of these we just saw in uh, Pat's uh, presentation, which was awesome, Pat. Thanks. Uh, here's a tarantula, which is a large and hairy spider. And as a matter of fact, right now is a good time to see tarantulas. This is when the males come out of their burrows and they start wandering about looking for females. Um, probably the last journey they'll ever take in their life. And um, over the hill from where I am, because I'm in Berkeley Hills, 
uh, so not quite warm enough and dry enough, I think, for tarantulas. So you want to go over towards Mount Diablo in that area. If you go in the evening, sometimes they'll be crossing a road or you can run into them on the trails. And they're beautiful and uh, very, very gentle creatures. They just walk slowly. They're on their way. They're on their quest and they have things to do. So they're not going to bother anybody. And these spiders are hairy and they make burrows. Uh, here's one, her, her abdomen's in the burrow there. And if you look around, you could see maybe all these little shiny pieces about, which are bits of insects that have been eaten. These uh, insects probably passing by and made the mistake of walking too close to the tarantula's burrow. This next one is a turret spider. Mm. And like a lot of spiders, they like to come out at night only. Uh, and they build these beautiful little turret structures out of soil and bits of twigs and moss and lichens and things. You can usually find these um, on a trail that's cut into a bank. So if you have a, a steep bank next to the trail, especially with some overhanging vegetation, you might find these turrets, which look like, uh, I don't know, little castles. Here's one. They're silk lined and probably held together with silk. And you can see like the little mud bits. And um, this plant next to it is moss. So it's a very small thing. Even though the spider looks pretty fierce, it's, a, it's tiny. And here's one that was coaxed out of its turret by this piece of grass here. So they're waiting for insects to walk by and bump into their turret and they'll come out. They'll come, you know, <laughs> jumping out or very quickly come out and seize whatever it is. And in this case, it was fooled by a piece of grass, which is not very nice um, and probably wasted some of the spider's energy. So we had to apologize to the spider there. Uh, here's a Colobia spider. It doesn't have a common name. And uh, so, you know, we made up one, a tree trunk spider, since they can be found in the bark crevices of many trees, especially here in the park. And they make this sort of a little funnel to be in or a, a tube in the center of their messy web in this bark crevices. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Which one is this, male or female? As we learned in our last, uh, by our last presenter. Now, Colobius has these beautiful patterns on the back. Other spiders do too, but it's part of their, uh, their, their look. There's one more. He's got a little hole he's coming out of. And uh, this spider lives all throughout my house and maybe in yours, perhaps you're better at cleaning your corners or just meaner to spiders than I am. But uh, the cellar spider or some people call daddy long legs, but also the harvest men is called daddy long legs. So a little confusing, but they are definitely very long legged. And um, this female is holding her eggs so she can protect them. And they're often up in the corner of your house or down in some dark part of your, if you have a basement. And they, they're always around, uh, they, they hang out with us, with people. They've followed people to many parts of the earth and they like to live in your house. Um, I've seen these when uh, I've bumped into their web and they will shake in their web and make themselves look scary. And it looks sort of like they're dancing or something. Here is one eating one of those other spiders we just saw. So spiders eat insects, but they'll also eat other spiders also. Oh, and you can see the spinnerets here. So uh, woolly web weaver, gray house spider, uh, many names of this spider that came many years ago to California from Australia and um, really likes your juniper bushes and your fence lines and the sides of buildings and so forth. And it's another spider that seems to enjoy uh, human 
efforts, houses, fences, and things that we build. Now, only that spider knows what it's uh, it, trying to do with that web there. It's not your typical cartoon type uh, spiral web, but I'm sure it works for the spider. Some nice eyes. Wolf spiders run around on the ground a lot. They're cute up close. He's got some nice eyes over here and some forward facing eyes for catching, chasing prey, seeing prey and catching it. Now, usually there, this is that egg case that we learned about and usually it is a kind of tan or beige or something. This one's bluish, not sure what's going on there. Nice. So handsome. These are probably my favorite, I guess, just because their colors and the way they look. These crab spiders, which are often, uh, you can see them on flowers waiting for pollinators to land and just land in between their legs where they will be eaten. Some of them have a, like you have this yellow kind on a yellow flower and it's got excellent camouflage. And I've seen, uh, been walking down the trail and, and saw this butterfly and it just seemed odd the way it was resting on this flower and on closer inspection it was in the jaws of a crab spider so it, it looked a little awkward and caught my eye uh, they'll even eat a bee or a wasp uh, here's one that you might run into taking the garbage out or something these can make some large webs outside your house somewhere uh, kind of the typical spider web, orb web. And this variety has this sort of cross-shaped pattern on its back. It can be scary if you run into a spider web and some of the web gets in your face or in your mouth or something and you wonder where the spider is and if it's running around on top of your head. But have no fear, just relax, it'll be okay. And then there's some of the spiderlings of the cross orb weaver. So they just hatched out. They're everywhere, they're super cute. Some of them will probably eat each other and the rest will try to disperse and go somewhere else. And of course, probably our most famous spider, the black widow, which uh, just strikes fear in our hearts because it is the spider that can make us sick and feel bad if we get bitten by it. Um, and uh, so they have quite the reputation. And they uh, are known for their pattern, the beautiful pattern on the female under her abdomen. And then here's the male. Now this says actual size, but what it means is relative size. So if that's the female, the male is that size compared to the female. So he's tiny, which, uh, you know, he sometimes doesn't make it out of the uh, mating process. Oh my goodness, are they deadly? Here's a question. How many people in the U.S. have died from black widow bites? Go ahead, throw it in the chat. 10, 20, 1,000, 1 million people? Oh, none, zero, zilch, nada. Look, this is a real scientific paper. Only three cases of deaths associated with widow spiders have been reported in the world medical literature. No known cases in North America. Move you guys. Oh, I couldn't do it. Whoops. So, uh, sure, it could harm you. You could have some necrosis at the site. You could have aching uh, muscles. Uh, you could throw up. So it's, it's not a joke to be bitten by a black widow, but no one has died in, in the U.S. from black widow bite. Spiders just don't want to eat you. They like insects and small creatures. We're too big.
Whoops. So mostly spiders are gonna hide like this one and just kind of try to be left alone. Or this spider actually tries to scare you away because you're a dangerous predator to the spider and you'll, it'll show its fangs to say, look, I'm serious, get away from me. And this one even has like a little cool colored area to show off the fangs a little bit, but still it's, it's just bluffing. It just wants you to go away, please, please go away. Spiders are friends and they help us. Like Patrick said, they eat all those pesky insects and these filthy disease carrying flies. Although flies are one of my favorite groups of insects, just saying. And will you give spiders a chance? Like, I think everybody probably knows this, but let me, maybe I'll unscreen share. Thanks for learning about us, everybody. Let me unscreen share here. Stop share. Okay, that's my hand. And here's my camera. And here, playing the spider today, is a small pink ring. Please focus. Thank you. Oh no, there's a spider in my house. I've trapped it under a glass. I've carefully slid a piece of paper and now the spider is trapped and is no danger to anyone. Now I can take this whole thing outside and let the spider go. No one gets hurt. Spiders have been saved. And you, my friend, are a spider hero. <laughs> and I bet some of you have done that before. Come on, camera, you can do it. I'm right here. Hello, there you go. And I brought one spider friend to share with you. Please don't eat me. Here's Rosie, a rose-haired tarantula, the kind you probably would find in a pet store. Oh, she's feeling very active today. And she just wants to walk around and probably get away from me. So she's a friendly sort, I guess. I mean, she's never bitten anyone and she's been handled by many naturalists and she's walked over hundreds of children's hands. And um, she lives here in the visitor center. And if we were open, you could come in and say, hey, I would like to see your tarantula. And then um, if there's two of us here, one of us will run back and get it and show it to you. But those were the old days before COVID. Now I don't know what's happening next, but there she is. She's just a cutie. All right. Thank you, everyone. Let me get some more light on this spider here. Can you see her a little better? Yeah, there she is. So more commonly, this spider would flick hairs off of its abdomen to protect itself. And those hairs can stick in your eyes, your nose, or your mouth if you're a predator or a human. So you do have to be a little careful handling tarantulas. And that's the tarantula and spider story and I'm sticking to it. All right. You are muted. All right, thank you. Sure. I'm going to get us all back up here. All right, thank you, Pat. Thank you, Anthony. That was amazing thank and you. awesome. And um, I wanted to turn it over to Erin and uh, let her read the question and answers here. We've got lots of questions from our audience. So, so many questions from the audience. Um, there's some of them that I thought I would just cluster together. We had a bunch of questions about um, eating in spiders. And I suspect these are different depending on different varieties of spiders. But 
do any spiders eat plants? How much do spiders eat by, oh, Pat's shaking his head. Um, how much do they eat by weight, um, you know, compared to their body weight, like per day? If I don't see any bugs in my house, but I do see spiders, does that mean the spiders have eaten all the bugs? And do spiders' babies eat their moms? So that's a that's a, a lot of a lot of eating questions. So they don't eat plants. No. Okay. No. Spiders are all all of them are carnivorous, and uh, I haven't heard of babies eating the mothers. Uh, as Anthony said, the babies will be carnivorous on on each other. Um, and in terms of how much they eat a day, that's a good question. Um, there's a really good book, uh, The Biology of Spiders, uh, Rainer Felix. That's a really, really good book. But there's lots of information on the internet that would be fun to, to dig up about that. But Anthony was talking about crab spiders. And you see them with a like a bumblebee. And that's a, a prey item that's as big as they are. It's like you eating a human-sized hamburger. And, you know, they, I don't know, they work on it for maybe a few days or a day or something. So they can, they can probably eat a lot uh, uh, compared to their body weight per day. I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Anthony? Yeah. Uh, and then I would say they probably, well, you don't see bugs in your house and you see spiders. They can go for quite a while without food, I would say. So. Yeah. They will wait until they can get something. Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons they're a good pet, because you don't have to feed them every day. You know, you can go on vacation for a week and they're fine as long as you keep a little moisture in there for them, like a little moist paper towel. You know, they, they don't bark and uh, do all that kind of stuff. So spiders are a great pet. You you don't have to pay anybody to come in and take care of them. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, you with no bugs in your house, but spiders, you should open your window and let some mosquitoes in and. Yeah make sure those spiders have something to eat. I agree. <laughs> I see here that Emma is asking, I heard that spiders have the highest protein content of all creatures. Is that true? Should we start eating spiders? I don't know. <laughs> Not really uh, no, I don't think you want to eat spiders because uh, you know they'll, they'll take a toll and increase the bugs. Eat bugs. <laughs> bugs got a lot of protein, high roughage, low fat. There's, um, oh, sorry, there's a, a photograph I put in my presentation sometimes, which is, um, I believe it's from Cambodia, and there's a, especially one area or a town where spiders like these are caught and deep fried. Yeah. And there's a picture of a plate of well, hundreds of them, and I, apparently it's become sort of a tourist attraction to go to this place and eat spiders and probably put yourself on Instagram. And I, I mean, it must be having, and I, th I think I read something that said it's having a, an effect, you know, on the number of spiders mm -hmm. and their survival around the area. So hmm. some people do eat spiders. Can any spiders eat us? Nah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nah. How far do baby spiders travel before setting up their own homes? Oh, that's a good question. It, uh, I think they're at the, the mercy of the wind. Uh, what do you mean? Well, they, uh, they balloon away, right? They balloon? They crawl up onto the top of a plant. They stick up their abdomen. They put out some silk and like a kite. They're blown away and spiders are one of the first colonists of uh, new volcanic islands and areas where fires have gone through. So uh, that's a good question. You know, we have some big, big field at our school with these Argiope spiders. And uh, I'm always curious as to how far they travel or how far they have come from to land at our school. That'd be a hard one to figure out. 